In 1872, Leland Stanford, former governor of California, asked Edward Mybridge to take photos of his prize-winning horse, and to find out if all four hooves of the animal left the ground at the same time. Edward Mybridge then set up a series of 24 cameras which were attached to wires running along the floor, so as the horse ran through them it would trigger the cameras to go off one after the other. The test was a success, and the horse in motion was made. He also proved that all four hooves of the animal left the ground at the same time. The moving picture made its way around America and was a success. The following year, it was taken to France. Adrien Jules Marais saw the need for a single camera that could do the same job. Marais then went on to make a handheld camera gun, which was simply called a photographic rifle. The rifle shape of the camera made it easier for him to film birds and keep a steady shot. Thomas Edison wanted to improve on this, by making a camera and combining it with his phonograph. He said, and I quote, The idea occurred to me that it was possible to devise an instrument which should do for the eye what the phonograph does for the ear, and that by a combination of the two, all motion and sound could be recorded and reproduced simultaneously. After many tries, in 1889 the strip kinetograph was made, which was the first camera to run off film as we know it today. Edison then got $600 and made his own film studio, which was named by the workers the Black Mariah. The whole studio was built on wheels so they could turn the entire house into the direction of the sunlight, which was used to light the shot and the actors in it. The original sound is lost, but Edison was one of the first to film and add sound. Dozens of films like this were used in Edison's kinetoscope, popularly called the Peep Show. Formed into a continuous loop, the film ran for about a minute. Yeah, um, film really became popular very quickly at the end of the 19th century and into the very early days of the 20th century, mainly uh, when the Lumiere brothers um, managed to screen to an audience of more than one person, um, uh, to several people uh, above a cafe in Paris. In 1895, the arrival of a train, which was uh, a shocking experience, to say the least, because uh, they actually screened it onto the screen, a train arriving in the station, and the public themselves thought that the train was going to come off the screen and kill them all uh, and it's hard for us to understand that these days but it actually was true that's what they did Hollywood really jumped on it and saw that they could make money out of it so all kind of great adventurous science fiction films and uh, great epics start happening uh, in the early days of the 20th century uh, you get Ben-Hur coming up the great first silent movie version of Ben-Hur and you had the Thief of Baghdad I think and the Arabian Tales of the Arabian Nights uh, and these are all silent movies but um, after the First World War you get a really interesting development in Europe with the German expressionist movement in cinema and they wanted to express things that 
that were much more interesting about the human psyche and psychology. And you get, uh, with the cabinet of Dr. Caligari, um, you get the first psychological horror serial killer movie, uh, which was immensely uh, scary in those days. And not long after that, you get the first great undead Dracula movie, which was called Nosferatu at the time. And, uh, and that was the beginning of that whole genre of vampire um, movie and uh, incredibly popular still to this day all of those. As motion picture got more popular the demand for better quality films increased and a larger variety of films were needed and that is why the different genres are made. Although the old films seem outdated all of the new films are highly based on them and without the first pioneers and the people willing to leap into the unknown films as we know it today would not be the same.